This is the picture many people have when they think of the Caribbean. Sun, sand, water, a great vacation. But there's much more going on here. The Caribbean islands are home to one of the world's most unique lizard species. These iguanas have survived hundreds of thousands of years of hurricanes and other natural disasters, but human activities have left many of them on the brink of extinction. Here's an example of how the International Iguana Foundation has helped. Meet the hero of our story, the largest land animal in Jamaica, Cyclura coli, the Jamaican iguana. This is his story, a dramatic tale of rescue and recovery, and now one of the world's most celebrated conservation success stories. The iguana is an unlikely hero looking for all the world like a miniature dinosaur. When they're hatched, they're gray. Adults, particularly females, often appear red, a product of digging in the iron-rich soil deposits in their environment. They can grow to four and a half feet and weigh up to 12 pounds. Though they look fierce, these gentle creatures live mostly on leaves, fruit, and flowers. For centuries, iguanas have lived in a region of Jamaica known as the Helsher Hills. This is such a prime piece of pristine real estate, a beautiful example of tropical dry forest. And it's now listed as one of 300 sites under the Alliance for Zero Extinction as being critical to the survival of one species, that being the Jamaican iguana. You really can't talk about the survival of the Jamaican iguana without talking about the survival of the Helsher Hills. This dry tropical forest is filled with limestone caves where iguanas seek refuge. Helsher Hills, which is a natural dry limestone forest, is considered by many to be one of the largest remaining intact dry limestone forests, not only in Jamaica but in the Caribbean. There are over 270 species of flowering plants, 53 of which is endemic to Jamaica. Iguanas play a critical role in the Helsher Hills ecosystem. Iguanas benefit the habitat in several very obvious ways. Um, one that's frequently cited is their role in seed dispersal. It appears that not only do they disperse seeds, but by virtue of having passed through the intestinal tract of iguanas, germination viability is enhanced. So they are really important to maintaining not just the structure of the forest, but the diversity of tree species within the forest. But iguanas have many enemies. Back in the 1800s, in an attempt to control cane rats on the island, well-meaning colonists introduced to Jamaica the Indian mongoose, a voracious and highly effective predator. The mongoose began feasting on young iguanas. We have evidence that feral cats are also an incredible problem on young and certainly hatchling iguanas. And then dogs, um, feral or escaped dogs from, from hunters, are about the only predator that can take down an adult iguana and wild pigs are notorious nest robbers. All of these unnatural predators decimated the iguana population and by 1940 the Jamaican iguana was thought to be extinct. Here's where the drama takes an unexpected turn. But it was not until 1990 that a, that a pig hunter named Edwin Duffus and his dog uh, retrieved a live male Jamaican iguana and brought it to the Hope Zoo. And this signaled the rediscovery of the Jamaican iguana and literally sent shockwaves throughout the entire zoo and conservation community. Here's a species now given a second chance for survival. You know, what, is, what, what would this mean? In 1990, a biologist from the University of West Indies, Peter Vogel, and Rima Kerr, then curator of the Hope Zoo, formed a the Jamaican Iguana Conservation Research Group. And they put teams into the, into the Helsher Hills to actively search for the iguana. But the Jamaican Iguana Research and Conservation Group needed more money to support their work. The International Iguana Foundation formed in 2001 <laughs> in response to the critical lack of funding for iguana recovery programs. We got enough money to get by, but we weren't able to take any of these programs to the next level. We couldn't make plans from one year to the next. We really had to 
have a sustained revenue stream that we could make plans from year to year. So the Iguana Foundation allowed that to happen. Estimates were that no more than 100 iguanas survived in the 44 square miles of Helsher Hills. Given the threats on this population, could iguanas possibly survive in the Helsher Hills? A good question, because just look at the enemies iguanas face today. The iguana habitat faces destruction from people harvesting wood for charcoal. Charcoal, it turns out, is a really convenient and um, traditionally widely used fuel. And it's simply a matter of either finding dead trees or cutting down live trees and essentially cooking them to produce the charcoal. And civilization is closing in on iguanas as developers covet the Helsher Hills to expand tourism in the area. Working to save and protect iguanas in the wild is the International Iguana Foundation with the support of the World Conservation Union, the IUCN Iguana Specialist Group. The, the rock iguanas of the genus Cyclura are, as a group, the most endangered group of lizards in the world. To protect the species, conservationists had to increase the number of iguanas in the wild. To make this happen, the International Iguana Foundation funded extensive work on a special technique called head starting. Well, the Hope Zoo plays a very critical role in the Iguana Conservation Project in that we house the head starting program. So our major role in this really is to head start animals as they come from Hellshire Hills, take them to the point where they can be released into the wild and repatriated to make their contribution to the genetic pool in Helsher Hills. Head starting begins when hatchlings are collected at the iguana's nesting site in the wild. They're brought to the Hope Zoo where they'll live until they're three or four years old, large enough to survive the enemies they'll face in the wild. Each of these iguanas carries uh, two forms of ID, a permanent pit tag that's been uh, implanted in the uh, left rear leg. Five. It's a female, right? It's a female, five years old. Mm -hmm. And then it has a visible paint mark on the side, so when people see the iguana out in the, in the bush over the next six months, they'll be able to recognize it as one of the recent releases. And we also employ bead tags, which is a more uh, permanent form of ID that's visible in the field as well. It's February 08, and we're doing another large-scale release of Jamaican iguanas into Helsher Hills. These releases put us well over the 100 mark. Uh, the total number that have been released, been repatriated into Helsher Hills. Most of those have been done with International Iguana Foundation funding. We, we know that these iguanas are surviving. They're integrating with the wild breeding population. They're returning within a couple of years to nest. Um, so we know that, that head started iguanas can not only survive in the wild after a life in captivity, but they can reproduce and, and integrate with the wild population. As important as the Hellshire Hills is to the survival of the Jamaican iguana, there is one critical piece that really would complete the picture, and that's the Goat Islands. The Goat Islands historically was part of the, of the, of the range of the Jamaican iguana. It's, a, it's an island that's just, you know, one kilometer off the southwest coast of the Helsher Hills. Unfortunately, it is also inhabited by mongoose and it's overrun by goats. Um, and the Jamaican iguana no longer lives there. Goat Island is a small area that can be eradicated of mongoose and goats, and the iguanas will, will reproduce naturally. It would be natural recruitment with no predation. Goat Island is an is a ideal sanctuary. We really, really need to, to get iguanas back out there. take animals, take hatchlings from the wild, and you... So there's more work to be done. And you 
bring them to a safe location where they won't. The Jamaican iguana and its habitat are the natural living heritage of the Jamaican people. It's a great feeling releasing the animals. The other day, we were releasing them. I saw a few wild ones and I was just frozen at the time when I saw them because to know that we had taken this animal from its um, juvenile and now grown it to a size that predators, mongoose and so forth can't harm them. And to know that that animal has survived that long out there and is looking great, he was, his body condition was totally great. That's a good feeling and it really inspires me. The International Iguana Foundation seeks to protect these special places for future generations of iguanas and for future generations of Jamaicans. The International Iguana Foundation works where endangered iguanas are found, primarily in the Caribbean. Our projects include As one of the smallest species of rock iguana, the Turks and Caicos iguana is particularly vulnerable to introduced predators. Once common throughout the more than 200 islands and keys that comprise the Turks and Caicos, this species has been extirpated from at least 15 islands in the past 25 years and now occupies less than 5% of its historic range due to the spread of feral mammals. With support from the International Iguana Foundation, this critically endangered iguana has been successfully restored to six small predator-free keys since 2002. Due to heavy predation of hatchlings by feral cats, the Anagata iguana population was reduced to fewer than 300 animals in the 1990s. In response to this crisis, a head starting and release program was initiated in 1997. The International Iguana Foundation has supported these efforts, and to date over 120 head-started iguanas have been returned to the wild, significantly augmenting the breeding population of this critically endangered and genetically unique rock iguana species. Considered one of the most endangered lizards in the world, the wild population of the Grand Cayman Blue Iguana fell to less than 25 animals in 2002. However, thanks to intensive conservation measures and dedicated individuals, this beautiful iguana now appears to be on the road to recovery. The International Iguana Foundation has supported the captive breeding, head starting, and release program that has contributed to this amazing comeback from the brink of extinction. The Rikord's iguana has disappeared from most of its historic range and is now known from only three subpopulations in the Southwest Dominican Republic. Communal nest sites are vitally important to the continued survival of this critically endangered species and the International Iguana Foundation is supporting efforts to protect these areas from conversion to agriculture. With 99% of the total population of the Fijian crested iguana found on just one tiny island in the South Pacific, new populations need to be established to ensure the survival of this critically endangered iguana. The International Iguana Foundation has supported ecological studies on this population that will help guide future island restoration work. Spiny-tailed iguanas are widespread throughout Mexico and Central America and are threatened primarily due to hunting for food. Four species with tiny ranges clustered in Honduras and Guatemala are ranked critically endangered and need urgent conservation action. The International Iguana Foundation has funded genetic research to provide a better understanding of these species and hosted a workshop to draft action plans for their survival. Of the six rock iguanas restricted to the Bahamas, the San Salvadoran iguana is one of the smallest and most beautiful. Gone now from the main island of San Salvador, this subspecies is highly vulnerable to introduced predators and occupies only 2% of its former range, with just 600 individuals remaining on four offshore keys. With support from the International Iguana Foundation, 
a new island population was established in 2005 that will help ensure the survival of this unique and critically endangered iguana. Iguanas are at a critical crossroads and some species are in danger of being lost from the earth forever. The International Iguana Foundation is committed to the survival of these species. Help us to help iguanas with your support of the International Iguana Foundation. I personally like iguanas and I like to work with them because they're, they're quirky. Each one has his own personality. I mean, look at Gitmo here. How can you not love a face like that? They're cool, large symbols of their environment. They're very important animals in their environment and each one has their own personality. How can you not love an iguana? We've been able to save many of the critically endangered species, but now we need to take it to the next level. We need constant presence there to enable us to do the predator control, to do the head starting and releases, and everything else that needs to be done with these animals to save them. The benefits to supporting the IAF are many. Um, not only are you saving keystone species in the environment, but you're saving the habitat they live in. For example, the rock iguanas of the Caribbean live in an endangered ecosystem, the tropical dry forest. So when you save an iguana, you're saving that ecosystem and all the species that live in it. Not only are you saving Caribbean species, but Mexican species as well. You're saving animals that live in the Galapagos, animals that live in the islands of Fiji, beautiful places that need our help. We know how to save iguanas. What we need is the funding to do it. It can be your legacy to help save an entire species of iguana from extinction by donating to the International Iguana Foundation.